Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country, offering over 250 engaging programs online. Praised for its culture of community, students engage with faculty and connect with counselors who take a personalized approach for your success. GCU's online students received over $144 million in scholarships in 2021. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. The world is always on, but you shouldn't be. Put junk sleep to bed. During Mattress Firm's sleeping spree event, save up to 50% on ceiling with queen mattresses starting at $349.99. Only at Mattress Firm. Restrictions apply. See store or mattressfirm.com for details. You're about to listen to a podcast full of wonder, excitement, and discovery. It's time for an adventure through Odyssey. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Adventures Through Odyssey podcast, Odyssey Revisited. I'm Will here with John. We're going to continue through fundamentals. We hope you enjoyed last week's episode, and we do apologize that we had to re-upload it because I bungled the audio editing the first time. But yes, we did decide to keep the name Noah's Nudity because nobody said it was bad. What's up with this audio problems lately, Will? Well, I just bought new headphones and I had to calibrate them correctly. Hmm. Intriguing. Uh, yes. All right. First episode, let this mind be in you. While Wit is gone for a few days, Connie tries to become just like him, but fails in various ways. Has, has this always been the name of this episode? Yes. Because I remember this episode, when I saw the name of this episode, I was like, what the heck episode is this? Hmm. Wait, did you not listen to the episodes again? No, I did listen to the episodes. What I said was, I remembered this episode, but when I saw the title to go listen to it, I didn't know what it was. Like, usually if someone says the Uh, Odyssey title, I probably have a good idea of what it is, but... Okay, yeah. Uh, So, I liked it. I still do like this episode. I... I think there's a little too much reliance on the visual of Connie dressing as Mr. Whitaker that it, maybe this should have been a video so we could have seen it. Yeah, I think that's fair. I'm right. However, and this is something I've noticed. Odyssey really at this point in time liked their talking about a visual joke. Which it's yes, like they Connie did. dressed as wit is funny. Like it's a funny, it's a funny idea. But at the same time, it's kind of like, okay, this would be funnier to see it. I would agree. There were, uh, I will also say, because there's a lot of Connie and Eugene have to work together in Wits End episodes in this kind of year of the show. And I tend to get them mixed up, so I had to write my notes. This is the one where she messes up telling the story of Jacob wrestling with the angel, tells Jim, gives Jimmy bad advice, and Eugene tries to repaint the Bible room. Uh, the, the repainting of the Bible room is fun. I feel like it's kind of just an interesting, like, thing for Eugene. They're like, ah, Eugene says, I'm going to paint the room a different color. But I feel like it would make more sense for him to be like, oh, Mr. Whitaker wanted to, like, fix this thing. Uh, I would agree. I think they're still trying to figure out what Eugene's character is. That's fair. I feel like with Connie... I, f- I will say this, with the Connie and Jimmy thing, I've always liked that. I always like when they reference another episode. Yes. And so I like that it's like, oh yeah, that did just happen a few weeks ago. I, I agree, and again, between this and the bike, I feel like Jimmy at the arcade is a through line throughout this entire album. Yeah. Uh, But one thing I would say is, I'm not saying Donna needed to get in trouble. She was kind of the one egging Jimmy on to To not tell his parents. Yeah. Well, that part maybe didn't come out. Well, that could be true. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, if I were Jimmy, I'd have no problem throwing Donna under the bus for... I 
I need like an Odyssey age chart constantly because I want to. I, I assume at this point in time they envision Connie to be like 16, 17, maybe. Right. And I just wonder how old like some like Donna is. Like Donna, I would assume is at least in middle school. Honestly, I don't know. I would assume you're right. I guess though. It, I always think like, well, it's like a junior high getting high advice from a high schooler, but there's a big difference. I guess junior hires did look up to high schoolers. High schoolers can look very more mature than, especially in the eighties. Have you seen those videos? Well, of like, of, yep. like, of like teenagers in the eighties who look like adults. Yes, I have. So maybe it's just in my school where all everyone looked like little. People. Like like little right. puny high school junior hires. Yes. Now, and a fun fact about this episode. So, Connie cannot unplug the Bible verse mirror because it's wired into the wall, seemingly foreshadowing a bite of applesauce when they had, Wit tells Eugene he's wired every invention at Wit's end to Mabel. Mm. That, I didn't even think about that. That's very true. That, that could have been a reference to it. Because so, we're only a few episodes away from it at this point. Yeah. That does seem like a safety hazard, though. I do agree. Like, I feel like if the health code were to show up, or the health code, the health department. Yeah. Someone went, hey, wait, you gotta have these things be able to unplug. Right, like these complex inventions that can start, like, smoking, right? Yes. Yeah. And... N- Maybe it was because our mother was such a detail person. Why did Wit not read the list over with Connie and Eugene? I know. It seems... Well, it seems weird. And then they're like, they totally forgot about the list. But, like, I mean, I guess that's understandable. But, right, if he's just like, make sure you do, like, these few things. Yeah, don't feed him milk. (laughs) Oh. I see. But, uh, truly, uh, it's a good episode, it's a good message, I think it just would work better as a visual story. I agree. Alright, a good and faithful servant, the Barkley family, tries a new budget. (sighs) (laughs) This is- Well- No, go, go ahead. Please go ahead. No, please, you go. Okay, I guess I'm just curious- did this episode get released? Because I can't find any information about it on the wiki. With like a little booklet so families could do this by themselves because they give a lot of detail to it. Yeah, this really, it really seems like it's supposed to be like a super like practical, like specific episode. I mean, maybe it was envisioned to have this along with like a thing. And maybe that never happened, like a little booklet or that they could sell it individually. I mean, I feel like this just, I mean, it's nice that they have the kind of stereotypical, like, children's show budgeting plot line, but having a Christian yes. thing to it. But I would the, agree with that. At the same time, it's kind of like, stuff like this is so often done. Yes. I would also say, I'm not saying they need to go into deep depth about the budget, but, like, apparently they can't go on vacation one year because of this budget. Yeah. So, and I feel like they can never really decide, is this just how the kids are doing the allowances, or is this how the whole family is supposed to be operating? It is, it is interesting, especially because it's like, you know, the Barkley films will obviously have money issues later in the show. Yes. But it's not like the money issue, it's like the budget's driven from money issues here. It's more just like, oh, how else are we supposed to get money from you? Although somehow Jimmy has had, like, 50 bucks. I guess if he, like, saved up his birthday money and he found some money under his bed? Well, like, right, I think he said some birthday money, but, like, where did that money under the bed come from? I would agree with that. It's a good question, especially if we're coming in the same album as that episode. Yeah. I, I do wonder about the end a little bit. Like, obviously it's good. Yeah, I was... Donna gave her money. Yeah, I was about to say, this is the one thing I'm a little perplexed by. Yeah. Well, because... Not perplexed, but... Well, because the whole thing's about saving your money and you... And, like, 
like a whole thing is like budgeting your money for things that you want, but then it's like, no, we should give our money away to the poor, which is true. We should give our money away to good causes and to the church, but it's also kind of then like, um, her, her dad pays for the thing she would have spent the money on anyway. Well, it's a mission trip, so I'm sure Focus thought that was okay. Right, right, right. It's like, I totally understand it. It's just like, it's a good feel-good end, but because the the story's more focused on the budgeting aspect, and like, you know, making, I mean, it, it's also about making good use of your money, but kind of the budgeting aspect thrown out the window at the end. A little, I guess Jimmy budgets, but it's such little bit about, like, what Jimmy's doing with the money ver- it, when it's way more about Donna. All right. Again, it's a Donna-centric-ish episode that everybody else has to play a role in. Yeah. I do like this. I, 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 sorry. Oh. No, I was going to say, I think the ending does kind of lean into, parents, if your kids spend money on a good cause, you can pay for that mission trip for them. Well, yeah. And that's not bad. I don't think it's bad. I just guess I would have rather had episode be more about like using your money for i mean and it is it's like about being good stewards of the gifts you're given but it's at the same time it's yes. kind of there's kind of two different things going on which i don't it definitely leans towards which they should towards being good stewards of money and giving your gifts back to be used and used for god right. but yeah <sighs> Right. Uh, I just want to point out, though, and this is not me saying you shouldn't donate more than this. They do have a tithe envelope. Yeah. So it's not like they weren't giving money to the church. I'm not saying they shouldn't have. Ex- they should have admitted that. I'm just. Yeah. Point it out. Although, and according to this episode, where is it? The financial plan they go on is based on the Ron Blue book, Money Matters for Parents and Their Kids. Interesting. So just thought I'd point that out. So, uh, you know, today this would have been a club episode and the dude would have shown up to talk about money. Yeah. It would have been like they'd gone to the school or like the church and talked about it. It would have been the spurring point. Oh, yeah. All right. The greatest of these, Robin Jacobs is struggling with her school partner, Oscar Peterson. I was thinking this is so soon after the Bible study episode. Well... I agree, but you also have to remember the Bible study comes into play here. Right, right, right. I guess I always thought it was a little later. I think this is a really good episode, you know, especially, like, I think it deals with, like, it, it, it gets heavy, but, like, has a good balance of, like, the heaviness and comedic aspects. Yes. I think it also makes a really good point with Robin. And basically Robin gets in and she finds out there's a problem with Oscar and which just like, why, oh, now that you find out he has a problem, you like, thinks it's poor Oscar versus. Agreed. Especially. No, because, I appreciate they bring that up. Especially because like, right. It was just like, he turned it the wrong way. Like the little dial. Oh yeah. Which isn't like that big of a like it like it could have been far worse and like right some people just aren't as good at school like they're they're they could have done some things that it's like oh this is horrendous like what happened but they choose like very like this is a very manageable situation yeah i was about to say you know right it's just a little baking soda volcano going off throughout a wit's end now i will say that i'm reading I think yes. what a horrible teacher they have that in w- the the teacher has because it's the spurring point of the spelling bee where the teacher's like the loser of the spelling bee has to um do the other kids' homework for them. That is pretty bad. That's it like it's not it's not just like, oh, you don't have to do your, the winners don't have to do their homework, which even then I would think would be a little unfair, but like more understandable. Because yes. Be like, oh, these students have to like actually write down the other person's homework. Like, that's just like kind of cruel. Yeah. 
No, I, I agree, especially because I don't mean this in a bad way. The kids who won this, who lose the spelling bee, are probably not the smartest kids in the class. Right, exactly. So, eh, I, I agree with you on this one. It, it's a bit of a weird, I don't want to say twist of the knife, but like, certainly an interesting decision on their part. Right, and what happens is, it's like, it goes to the person who got it wrong. It's it's like, it's almost like a shaming thing. It's like, oh, we have to do this homework because of you, Oscar. I would be mad at the teacher because it's like, but that just. Oh, yeah. That's always rubbed me the wrong way that the teacher does it like that. I think, though, everything else in terms of, like, the stuff with Oscar and I think the stuff with Robin, I think all that's pretty played well. And I think it's a good message. Yeah, I think it's a really good message. I, this is, I'm guessing this is one of the early shows to talk about dyslexia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could be wrong, though. Uh, and I feel like this kind of starts the trend of Robin being semi-unlikable. Yeah. I mean, I... I don't mean it's in a bad way. I was gonna say, I feel like every episode she's in is kind of about her being a little overbearing and having to learn a lesson. Yeah, I will say that. I do think, and I and I think the voice, I don't think it's a voice actress. I think the voice actress does a good job, but they always do kind of paint Robin as, like, she's doing something almost worse than, like, the other kids, or, like, she's actively, like, like the whole time, like, being late episode. Yes. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, she's letting down her team, and, like, she's kind of making, it's like, right. I feel like every, oftentimes when she comes up, it's kind of like, well, this is, like, kind of bad. I would agree. I guess it's, like, maybe, even they reference it, like, in the 50th in the 50th album, they have her call in, and they talk about how, yeah. like, almost she's, like, hot-headed. Oh, yeah, they do, because don't they? She's, like, a lawyer representing people, and Connie, like, has this weird call. With her. Oh, and yeah. And even the call itself is weird. Like, I've always thought that's weird. Like, that's how they viewed Robin as a character. It's especially weird because Chuck Bolte's daughter voices Robin. <laughs> that's really weird. So, so like, I guess I'm glad no nepotism, but... Still, so, yeah. And, and again, this is just like a running theme of Odyssey. They always pick one of the characters to kind of be the character who has to learn the lessons about them being too intense. Well, now they have three of them. So, yeah. anyway, bad, bad company. Connie attends a Bible study with a questionable leader, while Donna hangs out with a girl who might not be honest. I will say this. I think this Donna episode has less to do with... Oh, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry I said that last week, everybody. <laughs> well, it, it's it's a trend where the Donna episodes tend to be, it's more like a Barkley family episode in a way. This one, though, is very yes. Donna-centric. True. You know, I, I find it funny that whenever times there's, like, a thing with, like, a friend where it's like, I don't know if this friend's, like, good to hang out with it like turns like oh they're doing something real bad like it's not like even something like oh that's kind of questionable like it's very black and white like oh she was stealing stuff right it's not oh maybe we're skipping church for the night or something right or it's like i made a fake id and i'm hanging out with like older kids well that might turn into a little bit of a dark but, but, right but like it's it's kind of like okay like, I mean, I'm people do steal and pickpocket. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie about that. But I think it could be a more interesting, nuanced episode of something more like. More. I don't subtle. disagree with that. Like, I think even the yeah, Bible one... study is slightly better, but you know, even then, it's still. A I little mean, we... weird at times. I'm sure a lot of people have been to weird Bible studies like that. But I do appreciate they actually bring back some of this false teaching stuff later when Connie helps Olivia through her faith crisis. Yeah. Well, so I mean, not, not directly, but you can tell she learned something from this episode and reapplied it. Yeah. Like, I think I, I, I also think the Bible study 
is a little like like this seems like a very like specific denominational bible study um but also like i think even having like a topic be like a bible study that's not like you go to a bible study and they may be teaching things that aren't related to christianity i think that's a harder idea for a kid to grasp necessarily so i get that being a little more like bludgeoning like what's a huge just obvious glaring thing that i would agree with like personally i'd be like well i want it to be more subtle or something but i'm also kind of like as an adult but like as a kid like they a kid's probably never thought that like a bible study or a bible teacher would necessarily tell you something that's not in the bible so i do think you kind of have to be doing it not subtly works well right oh yeah and so I have the two notes about Rachel in this episode. One, just at the end when she completely blows Donna off. So she's, is this like a new thing Donna didn't notice until this episode or? Yeah. Just, just notable. Like if she stole the earring, she had to know something was up. But then also they actually do mention in this episode, Donna's been going through a lot the past year, assumedly Karen. Yeah. So. I think exactly. I, so. I appreciate at least keep trying to thread that needle, although it was weird. We have a whole episode about Donna learning prayer doesn't always work, and Karen doesn't come up. Yeah. So, maybe they thought that would be too dark, but... Yeah. Alright, we're taking a break from Fundamentals for a minute to go to... The Imagination Station, Parts 1 and 2. Digger Digwillow learns that the Bible isn't boring by the Imagination Station in the story of the Crucifixion and Easter... I like how, I mean, it is this thing he thinks the Bible's boring. It, 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 I guess, like, it's just an interesting, like, preface it. They're like, well, if you think the Bible's boring, what if you were in the Bible? Eh, true. But I guess in some respects, that's what the imagination station is, is this experience rather than reading it. However, besides that, great episode, classic. Yes. One of the few episodes you know, to essentially get directly remade. It is true, but it's called Revisited, so it's at least from a different angle. But I, I do think one thing that kind of helps this episode a lot is they had already had a few Let's Tell the Bible Story episodes, and then they did the Imagination Station. So it's the Imagination Station fully formed in the way it is later in the show. Except for that one part near the end where Wit comes on the microphone and talks to Digger. Yeah. That would come, Which that I mean, to be fair, a few times I think. Okay, yeah, it happened a few times, so I'll I'll give them a pass on that one. Yeah. I mean, it's hard because uh, it's the story of Jesus. Yes. You know, it's it's very directly the story of Jesus. You know, probably what's going to be more interesting is when we talk about revisited. When we need to compare yes. like what they had in one version versus the other version. You know what? That's a good point. We'll have to keep our notes. Is this the first very clear conversion on screen of a child in the show? Or uh, is there one? In no, because for Freddie Hart had one like in episode 19. To be fair, they cut away from them praying and then mentioned he became a Christian. So... Mm. Got it. But no, you're, you're definitely right. So, yeah, I think this is good. I think it's... A, it is interesting to me they picked such a heavy hitter Bible story as their first Imagination Station episode. Like, I would assume they would have picked something smaller. I agree, and I think that's... And I think that... I mean, it gives credit that I'm sure they worked hard on this episode that arguably the most important Bible story they do, like, the first time yes. around and, like, hit it out of the park. I would agree with that. You know, there's some good humor at the beginning, but then it, like, you know, it shifts to being more serious. True. And that's another, because this is the first two-part Bible story, and I do agree with you. Part one's a little more light, and part two is where all the heavy stuff happens. Yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, the whole, the, the you know, the Easter story, like, the whole week isn't necessarily heavy. You know, there's Palm Sunday. Like, The Last Supper, right. I guess The Last Supper has some heaviness to it, but it also has some, like, it, that's, 
I never thought about, I guess, The Last Supper in terms of, The Last Supper is heavy. It is the last and somewhat foreboding, but also it's communion and the good things associated with yeah. that. Yeah. So, so, yeah, a really good episode. An interesting break in the middle of all these fundamentals because it was probably around Easter at this time. So, yeah, March 1989. I'm going to assume that was close to Easter. Hello? Yeah, sorry. I'm looking... I'm I'm trying to remember what each part is. the The first part ends with them saying to crucify him, right? Basically, yes. Yeah. I mean, it is like sad. I mean, obviously, Jesus dying is sad and then happy because he died. He like, you know, died for our sins and we're able to live forever in heaven with him. Yes. It is. It is heavy. For a child to, to see that. I do wonder. Like. I, I, I'm i more saying this. Just because I think we need to talk a little more. About this episode. Given what it is. I always wonder like. How censored is the imagination station? That's a good question. I have to assume this is like a PG level. Telling of the story. Right? Like Yes like, I doubt. He's on the cross, and obviously it's really sad. But I have to assume it's like... Yeah, I don't disagree with this. Like, it can't be, like, Passion of the Christ level, like, intensity. Or, like, when there's, like, war scenes. I have to assume, like, no one really gets shot. Or if they get shot, there's no blood. Agreed. (laughs) You know, it's... That's my own weird mind, but it's like, you know, some of these stories are darker and like actually seeing them would be very intense. So it just, it's interesting. They've like never touched on that. I feel like in any, and maybe they have, and I'm forgetting, but never touched about like, wouldn't it like Eugene even being like, wouldn't it be more graphic than that? Mr. Whitaker. It's like, it's like Eugene, we're working with kids here. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree with that. I'm sure that's kind of their way of hand-waving that of, hey, we're not doing the bloody and gory version of this. Yeah, exactly. Right. And and I'm actually curious, because this obviously gets moved to the next album, because they want to have album four be all of the fundamental episodes. Mm-hmm. I know this was probably just written as an Easter special. It does play pretty well as a prologue to all the Blackguard stuff, because, you know, he basically blows up the Imagination Station. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. I think I, I, I wonder if they had the idea for the imagination station and then I want, or they were like, we need something to blow up. We need something he wants to get his hands on, you know, that, that could be true. Uh, My guess is Mm. they did the imagination station. They're like, ah, we can use this great thing. He can like manipulate this great thing, you know? Yeah. And then this is actually also the first episode to air on the Focus on the Family radio show before it aired as an Odyssey episode. Huh. I'm just cu- I'm just curious what that means, because it's only on part two. So did they only air part two, or did Dr. Dobson say, okay, for the next hour, we're going to give you a preview adve- of Adventures in Odyssey, including the premiere of part two of our newest episode? <laughs> Maybe it was... It could have been part two. I mean, because this is a very good... I would say thing to put in the show because I mean you don't really need a ton of context for Odyssey. It's just like a kid experiencing the Easter story. I would agree, and you know they at least try to bring Digger back for one episode. One episode that I feel like is quite far down the path. Am I wrong about that? A, uh, a little bit. Like it's after all the Blackguard stuff, so. Oh, I guess it's it's fairly fairly recent it's eight episode 82 i for some reason always felt like the heat wave episode where he comes back was like 30 or 40 episodes like a year later at least but i guess it's like 15 episodes yeah right it, it is just interesting that he's a pivotal character in the in this first imagination station episode but then doesn't stick around exactly and he also creates wonder world i know like also really pivot like He's in two very pivotal things that would, like, recur. And then he just kind of gets dropped. 
And I wonder if that yeah, was now he's just some a, kid with a voice actor or whatnot. But it is surprising they did like try. I mean, I guess like if his big his character's written to be like this guy who questioned, and then he had this big conversion and this big influential moment. And I wonder if they were like scared to have him have like other issues. It's like, but he experienced the Easter story, you know? Right. It's just yes. I'm, it's it's curious to think about. Well, supposedly he voiced a ton of characters throughout the years, so Well that I would believe. So I don't oh he apparent I think he voiced Wit's grandson. Yeah, that sounds right. Because I the just voice thought, sounds familiar. It was like he's in the Green Ring conspiracy, and I was like, What? Oh, they brought the voice actor back. That's interesting. Yeah. But that Hmm. He and acted in Disney sing along songs Zero to Hero and Peter Rabbit. Oh, that's pretty funny. That is funny. All right, so that wraps yeah, so that wraps up this batch of six episodes. Next week we'll wrap up fundamentals, and I think we start the blackguard stuff. It probably will start coming up. So I so yeah, we'll look forward to that. Uh, and next week when we get to it, we'll wrap up our thoughts on Odyssey's first attempt at like a themed lesson album. Yeah, hundred percent. And then probably by this point, because we're recording these ahead of time, the October roundup will also be coming, where we'll read the new comics and discuss Nox on Sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. All right, I'm Will. I'm John. We'll see you next time.